day five boys and girls. Just imagine that you're on a lifeboat and the sea is calm and all is well. But then the wind starts up again and the lifeboat begins to rock about. You might say, I wasn't expecting this. I thought once I was in the lifeboat the storm would stop. I'm getting back into the water and I'm going to wait for another boat to rescue me. The captain might point out that there are sharks in the water so you won't last long and anyway, there is another boat on the horizon, just a plank of wood and you won't get far in that. In life, God provides us with a way of hope, a rescue plan. He wants us to come aboard his boat. Many people do choose to go along with God, but when the storms in life start up, they want to get off the boat and jump back into the water and try and find another way to feel safe and secure. But God's way is the only way and he promises to be with us in life's storms. Thank you boys and girls for all the wonderful pictures you entered for our competition for On or In the Sea. The junior prize goes to James Gibson for his super picture of Jonah and the Whale. The middle prize goes to Jimmy Hoy for his drawing with lots of 3D bits and bobs stuck on. And the senior prize goes to Madison McClanahan for her bright vivid picture of a submarine and sea animals. Thank you very much, everyone, for all the effort you put in. And well done. It was a really hard job to choose the winner. Hi, boys, Hi, boys and, and girls. girls. Our last memory verse today is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 21. And to find out what it is, Danielle and I are going to bob for some apples and we'll find out what it tells us. Number two is God. Number five is each other. <laughs> what number is it? One. one! Number one is love. Oh. Well, oh straight goodness. away. Number six is first John four twenty one. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop moving. <laughs> Number three. 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 <laughs> Number three is and. We're all just going to set together after three. One, two, three. Love God and love each other. First John chapter 4, verse 21. Good morning, all. Thank you for your commitment in returning to the HMS adventure on this, our final day. Let's start our final time together with a few jokes. Why do clams? not give to charity because they're shellfish. How did the oyster get to hospital in a clambulance? If I was to present an award to the most devoted sea creature I would have to choose the female octopus and let me tell you why. A mother octopus while caring for her eggs not only protects them from predators and ensures that they get enough oxygen to survive she never leaves them, not even to get food for herself. She faithfully does her job until the eggs hatch or she dies. The longest time that scientists have watched a female octopus look after her eggs, just one batch of eggs, was four and a half years. That is commitment. 
that is sticking at the job until it's complete. Today we're going to hear about a man whose friends were committed to bringing him to the Lord Jesus. They used an old-fashioned ambulance in an unusual way. The Bible tells us, A large crowd gathered to hear Jesus teaching inside someone's home. It is important to know that this story happened near the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He had just asked Peter, Andrew, James and John to commit to following him and would teach them how to become fishers of men. Because Jesus was a Jew, he spent much of his time in the synagogues, which are buildings where Jewish people meet to worship God and study his laws. Jesus was committed to helping his own people understand that he was the Messiah. He was the promised king, the one sent to share the good news of God's plan of salvation, the one who would heal diseases of body and mind, and who would heal the inward sickness of sin. When he taught people, people were amazed and declared that no one could teach like Jesus. He knew exactly what to say on every occasion and spoke with the power and authority of God Almighty. Jesus had no earthly home of his own and so often stayed at Peter's house in Capernaum. One day as they arrived back from the synagogue, Peter's mother-in-law was in bed sick, close to dying because of an extremely high temperature. Jesus simply told the disease to disappear and at that very moment Peter's mother-in-law sat up in perfect health and began to serve them supper. Later that evening as the sun was setting the Bible tells us that those who had family or friends that were unwell from all sorts of diseases brought them to Jesus to be healed. Jesus took time to meet with each person and he healed them all. There was no one whom he turned away There was no one whom he could not heal. As you read through the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John in the New Testament, you discover that Jesus spent many of his days doing the same thing. He got up early each morning to spend time alone in prayer with his Heavenly Father, before meeting with various people as he travelled from place to place with his disciples. Jesus performed miracles to meet the needs of those in his company. Each miracle of Jesus was an act of love. And each miracle was used to teach those who were there something about God and his kingdom. When people were healed from disease and saved from sin, they praised God. And so did everyone else watching on. And because of the change in their lives, these people then were bringing other people to Jesus to be healed and saved. In doing these things, Jesus was giving his disciples a good example of how to use their time as they committed their lives to becoming fishers of men. This day that we started to read about would be no different. A large crowd gathered to hear Jesus teaching in someone's home. As Jesus taught, more and more people arrived, and soon people were packed together inside the house, outside the house, and around the house. Many Pharisees and teachers of the law from every village in Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were part of the crowd that day because they had heard that the Lord had given Jesus the power to heal the sick. At this point in time they knew very little about who Jesus was and and what he taught and so they wanted to learn more about Jesus to decide for themselves if he would be a friend or an enemy. As Jesus preached the word to them Four men carried a man on a mat to meet Jesus. Their friend could not walk, but all of them believed that Jesus was the only one who could cure him. As they arrived at the house, they tried to make their way inside to bring their friend to Jesus, but they were unable to do so because people blocked away. Sad to say that in life some people tend to stop others coming to Jesus. Someone may tell you that you're too young to come to Jesus. Or that you're such a good person that you don't need to come to Jesus. Or you can go to somebody else instead of Jesus to save you. All of these things are untrue. Sometimes as a Christian, they can say something or do something that's hurtful or unhelpful. Or they are such a bad example of Christian living that it turns you away from Jesus. Forget about what other people say or do. The Bible says now is the time to turn from your sin and to come to Jesus as Saviour and King. Don't let other people stop you from doing so. 
These four men were committed to bringing their friend to Jesus. And so they were not going to let other people stop them from completing their mission. I can imagine one of them saying, If we can't go through the crowd, or go round the crowd, or go under the crowd, what about going above them? Let's do that. The four men carried their friend round the corner and climbed up the steps that led to the roof. They made their way across the flat rooftop to an area of tiles that could be opened and closed like an, an attic. They pulled away the tiles to make a space big enough for the man and his mat to fit through. And together they began to lower their friend into the room. Eventually the mat touched the floor, right in the middle of the crowd and right in front of Jesus. All eyes looked expectantly at Jesus. What would he do? The Bible tells us that Jesus looked at them and he knew within himself that these five men had come to him believing he could help. And we know that Jesus does not turn away anyone who truly comes to him. And so turning his attention towards the man who could not walk, Jesus said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. What? Did Jesus not know that this man could not walk? Yes, he did. Did Jesus not know that everyone was hoping he would do a miracle and heal this man? Yes, he did. So why did Jesus not do the miracle everyone was expecting? I believe that Jesus wanted to teach everyone an important lesson that day. And it was this. Jesus has power to heal and authority to forgive sin. Straight away, the religious leaders got the message. And although they didn't say anything, they thought to themselves, Does this man not realise he is sinning by claiming to be God? For who can forgive sins but God alone? Well, you know, yes, they were right in working out that Jesus was claiming to be God. But they were wrong in saying that Jesus was sinning. Because Jesus is God the Son. In fact, if anything, it revealed the religious leaders had sinful hearts because they did not believe that Jesus was Saviour and Lord. The Bible tells us that Jesus knew what the religious leaders were thinking. And so, in order to correct their thinking, he posed a question. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? We don't know if the religious leaders answered Jesus or not, but I can imagine what they would have replied. Well, it's easy to say your sins are forgiven, for how can anyone prove or disprove that forgiveness has happened inside a person? It is much harder to say get up and walk, for the man would need to get up and walk to prove the miracle happened. But if he could not get up or walk, everyone would know that you are a liar, because the man wasn't healed. Jesus looked around the room and confidently said to all those who were gathered, I want you to know this day that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And turning his attention to the man lying on the floor, Jesus commanded, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. All eyes now focused on the man on the mat. Would things remain unchanged proving Jesus was a liar? Or would he get up proving that Jesus was God the Son who had power to heal and authority to save? Immediately, the man stood up in front of them all. He rolled up his mat and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and offered praise to God for the unusual things they had seen that day. Unaware that more amazing and unusual things would happen in the the days to come. That day Jesus clearly proved that he was the Son of God, who had power to heal and authority to forgive sin. And over the next three years he proved how committed he was to completing his mission of seeking and saving sinners. He faithfully taught about the kingdom of God. He healed the sick from all sorts of diseases. He obeyed God's word perfectly so that those who trust in him as saviour and king could have eternal life. And best of all, he died on the cross to bear the punishment of those who belong to God's family. It was on the cross that Jesus could say his work of saving sinners was finished. He died, he was buried, he rose again like he said he would, and he returned to heaven. Today he enjoys watching those who belong to him change and become more like them, and in doing so committing their lives to pleasing him and serving him. 
You see, when you come to Jesus as Saviour, you must commit your life to him as King. Here are four things you can do to show you are committed to following Jesus as King. Number one, spend time with Jesus so you will change to become like him. Remember, the more time you spend with Jesus, the more you will realise he loves you. The more you realise he loves you, the more you will be committed to return his love and become like him. The more you are committed to become more like him, the more you will notice the change in your thoughts, words and actions, which are both pleasing to God and other people. Secondly, you need to improve your relationships with others. This is important because how we treat other people will affect how they respond and react to us. The Bible encourages Christians to love one another, to pray for one another, to tell the truth to one another, to be kind to one another, to serve one another, to be patient with one another, to be generous to others and to forgive one another. I can only imagine how much better our relationships would be if every Christian committed to pleasing God by treating others in these ways. The most important relationship you must improve right now is your relationship with your parents. God commands you to obey them. This can be one of the hardest things for you to do, but is one of the greatest ways you can show your commitment to God and to show the love, respect and commitment you should have for your parents. Thirdly, you should work hard with your head and hands in all that you have been asked to do. God has made us to enjoy thinking and being active. So paying attention and working hard in school is a great way to show your teachers that you are committed to pleasing God in all that you do. Keeping your room tidy and helping round the house shows your parents that you are committed to serving God by serving your family. Number four, lastly, become a fisher of men by telling and bringing other people to Jesus. This is without a doubt the greatest way of showing your commitment to Jesus. Jesus committed his life to telling people about the kingdom of God and inviting them to come to him for salvation. The disciples committed their lives to telling people about the kingdom of God and inviting them to come to Jesus as saviour and king. Those that Jesus healed and saved told other people about Jesus and did all they could to bring family and friends to him. It's no different for you and me. People will not get to heaven if they don't trust Jesus as Saviour and King. And they won't ask him if they don't know they need to. May you and I be committed to telling other people about the Lord Jesus Christ who came to seek and to save sinners. Let me encourage you to spend time with Jesus each day so you will change to become more like him. To do your best in all that you're asked to do so people will have respect for you. To treat other peoples lovingly so they will be more likely to listen to you when you seek to tell them about and to bring them to Jesus. Thank you for listening so well today and throughout the week. I hope you have enjoyed our time together and I trust you will remember that just like the people we met in the Bible stories, we have choices to make, many of which will involve a great deal of courage to become a Christian You need to call out in faith to Jesus as Saviour and King, allowing him to change your life as needed. God is committed to us, and when we choose to follow him, we too must be committed to God and to each other. Choices challenge us to make changes which are well worth making. So don't miss out. Give God control of your life and enjoy the adventures that he has chosen to send you on. Be safe. Be of good courage. Back to base. Hello boys and girls. For our last craft today, I am going to show you how to make your own bunting. For this craft, you will need plain paper or coloured card, scissors, string, glue, a pencil, a ruler and colouring pencils or pens. You will also need the template which can be downloaded from www.cullybaggyelam.com
Boys and girls, we hope you have enjoyed our adventure cruise this week in our Holiday Bible Club as much as we have. Hasn't it been wonderful to hear from Mark about those people in the Bible whose lives were changed because of Jesus? I'm sure you know that going on a cruise is usually very expensive, but this year no one has been able to go on a cruise because of lockdown. But we want to tell you that the adventure cruise that Jesus invites us on is free, but it is a challenging journey and some people think the cost is too high. For example, just imagine Jesus drawing alongside a person who is treading water to keep afloat. When there are sharks all around, Jesus reaches out to pull that person into the boat. Then imagine that person is holding on to a treasure chest, which he wants Jesus to pull into the boat too, but it's too heavy. It will push the boat under the water. Jesus can only take the drowning person. He cannot take the treasure chest as well. Just imagine what it'd be like if the person decided he couldn't climb into Jesus' boat without his treasure. That's exactly what some people do when Jesus offers to rescue them. Their treasures of life, their friends, their money, their position are too important to them. They choose to sink with their treasure because they don't want to take up the challenge of following Jesus. They think the cost is too high. Some boats don't have an engine. They solely rely on the wind. The wind is a powerful force that pushes the boat along as it sails across the sea. God describes his Holy Spirit as being like the wind. We can't see the wind, but we can see the difference that it makes. God fills us with his Holy Spirit. And just as the wind makes a difference to sailing a boat, so God's Holy Spirit guides us and comforts us, challenges us and gives us courage to do what is right. We hope that this week you have been challenged to respond to the call of Jesus and the prompting of the Holy Spirit to accept Jesus Christ as your saviour. Thank you for joining us and please remember to download the crafts and the worksheets for each day. We've added a little page at the end on day five which has a prayer that you might want to pray to ask Jesus into your life to become your Lord and saviour. God bless. Hello everyone. Holiday Bible Club has come once again to a close. Been slightly different this year, we've been unable to meet together. But on behalf of the Elam Church, I would like to thank everyone who has been involved. For those who worked behind the scenes to put the programmes together to get them online for all of the children to be able to watch. We thank you for all of the hard work. We also want to thank parents. We also want to thank all of the children who tuned in each day and watched the programmes, listened to the songs, took part in the crafts, tried to remember the memory verses and listened to Mark Donnelly as he shared God's word with his lesson each day. We thank you so much for being a part of Holiday Bible Club this year and making this journey with us. We trust and pray it will have been a blessing to you. And remember that because it's online, you will be able to go back on once again and watch any programme or listen to the songs or the lessons at any time that you desire to do that. But just before we draw our time to a close, I would like to pray and just commit everything to the Lord. Take a moment and pray with me if you will. Let's close our eyes, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything that has taken place this week. We thank you for all of the programs that were put together. We thank you for the truth of your word that was taught, whether it was in memory verse, in lesson or in song. And we thank you for every home and for every young person who tuned in to watch the programs. Lord, bless your word to every heart, we pray. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the love that you have shown for us through the cross. And, O oh Lord, as we would just pray for each young person now, Lord, we ask that your word will touch every single life in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless every single home connected, O oh God, we pray, as we commit it all to you now in his most worthy and holy name. Amen. Now remember, tune in at any time if you want to listen to anything again. And on behalf of the Elam Church, thank you and God bless you each one. Stay safe.